Yeah. <laughs> 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 so if they keep looking for him in every season, they're like, oh, it's it's so cool, man. Oh my god. <laughs> Tip out. Hit with the back of the arm. Don't don't hit with the tip of your elbow. Don't throw it out that far. You're still hitting with the tip of your elbow. Throw your elbow back. Yeah, so you're coming, you're hitting that with the tip. You're here, see. off my relation.
those bricks. So put the foot in. Ready, hit. So he said side elbow? Yeah. Palm up, palm down. Watch this. Center down low. Center down low. Relax and center down low. That's a that's a good one right there. See you were relaxed, but that struck strike had a lot of power to it. Okay. The other, you can hurt somebody with any of them. But one of them You're relaxed. You're relaxed. Right, okay. Right, right. It's got lots of power, you're relaxed, you could do other things. You could call back the strike. You're not overextended. You don't. You're not broadcasting all this tension. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know. Let's see. See how she's standing very still? Yeah. So when you're going forward, you're yeah. in the major dimension. Front snap and kick. So yeah. that's really left side. So you could hit. Like hit. That's all. Hit. Hit. Watch. Hit. Right side ready. Hit. Hit. See, I got hot. Hit. Uh -huh. See. Hit. Left see, so you see her lean right there? Ready. Hit. Hit. See, so I already got, hit. already got dimensionality over her. See. Hit. Back into a good and you don't even know it. I'm not drawing your attention to it. Either side. 
You wouldn't know I was doing that. You wouldn't even put him back in the big thing. Yes. Yeah. Somebody yeah. Oh, say it's like, hey, but I know no. okay. I'm in the back. We're there. Step back to the opposite side. Then you know. You know what I'm saying? Hey, but I know we're in trouble. Yeah. And, that, and that's what's fun. Step back and feel good. You're trying to play. Not play. this one. Feel like I'm trying to play. Ah. Opposite. Mm -hmm. This one. Good. Mm -hmm. And back. Step back to the other side. So they, they can't quite. Good. They're off balance, so they can't quite figure out how you um, do it because they're already off. You have your. They're trying um, to be one dimensional. Go through the walking drills, okay? So step them back into a right uh, forward stance, right high block, ready to hit. Step back into a left forward stance, this one. left downward block, ready to hit. Step forward, right forward stance, right one punch, hit. Did that quiet? Quiet? Yes, no, step back and step hey. forward. Uh, step forward into the right. I have two my right. 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 One punch. So, so you're dependent on left getting it then. Forward stance. Um, when you make that turn, I'm getting a little left. earlier, so I don't have to have as much during yeah. the turn. Seven forward, no, zero, right forward stance. Um, right side of the block. Yeah, block. so, yeah, yeah, so if you didn't have left one that I earlier, left one then punch you have to have it all the time. So I go like, table, right, table, right, table, table, like this. Mm -hmm. and rear, lower, elbow strike, ready to hit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even need it because I'm, I'm, I'm working it all down here. Stepping back into a right forward stance. It's, it, Left this is what you're playing with. Elbow strike. Right How do you do it? You just got to do it. Left. So this so is through me. You said uh, left, step back into a basic. right. Keep your arm you up. So step back, back into a left, left forward stance mm -hmm. with a right. But this is what you do. It's left. not this move left up here. Rear it's high. It. It's a relationship to this. And we right give you hit. these movements because they give you more liberty to make adjustments when you move like that. In case you don't have it. Step yeah. back into a right forward stance, right lunge punch, ready to hit. Stepping back into a left forward stance, right reverse punch, ready to hit. Three, and strike. Step forward into a right forward stance, right high block, ready to hit. Step forward into a left forward stance, left center block, ready to hit. Step forward into a right forward stance. Lower block, ready to hit. Step forward into a left forward stance. Left center block, ready to hit. Step back into a right forward stance. Right round cross elbow strike, ready to hit. Don't try to miss that last. Stepping back into a left forward stance. Left upward elbow strike, ready to hit. Stepping back into a right forward stance. Right mm -hmm. reverse elbow strike, ready to hit. Stepping back into a yeah, stepping back into a uh, left forward stance, um, left 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 rear low rear elbow strike. Ready well, I'm thinking about it. There you are. See, um, you, you started off with what you were going to do. Step forward. This would be a right forward, forward stance, left oh. palm wall. Been through that one. Right? Step forward into this a Left forward stance, right pablo, ready to hit. Step forward into a right forward stance, left front snapping kick, ready to hit. Step forward into a left forward stance, right roundhouse kick, ready to hit. Step back into a right forward stance, right upward knee strike, ready to hit. Stepping back, in, good. stepping back into a left forward stance, right roundhouse knee strike. Ready to hit. Stepping back into a right forward stance, right snapping kick. Ready to hit. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we're going to look 
that your Tazabaki moves and then move, um, move to the right rear corner and step. And back. Left rear corner, ready, step. And back. Left side, ready, step. And back. Right side, step. And back. Right front corner, ready, step. Back. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. Left front corner, ready, step. Hajime 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 Right oh, wait, right. that specific, right? Mm -hmm. so. yeah, is the left over the right? The right is yeah, that's over. It. <laughs> Correct. That's right. I mean, right over left. Right, right over left. Okay. Now, let's go that position again. Okay. So now, come up to your feet. I'm glad you asked me that at the beginning of class. Yeah. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe that might help you. Yeah, I thought more of that. Yeah. Did you do fighting stance? Yes. So did you cut them off? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're done through all the way. Yeah. Um, okay. And we'll just you did the time to Same hand on the kick. You kick left, you punch left. If you kick right, you punch right. No, it's a step outside, outside inside.
Let's see number three and you know, the right punch. Have a seat over here, Eric. Now, so, guys, you, you, you guys have a seat on the wall. So, what do you think? What do you think about this this belt? So, even though it's the first belt, it's interesting how difficult it is to say balanced in my energy to not bring the key up. To keep the key down. So it's good that that will be the that's the foundation that I get to work on that through all. Yeah, and it doesn't just get all solved. I mean, we get to a certain point. You know what I mean? Right. It, because we get to where we need other stuff to help us, but with it. But at the same time, we start adding another principle. <laughs> we right. start adding more material. So. You know, you, you can't stay at the same relationship for another belt. You have to change your relationship right. deeper, which is the next one is adaptability. And it, I mean, I don't know what you saw, but I felt a little better. A lot better than in you. that one. Yeah, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. just from last week. So. Yeah. It really takes a conscious effort at, at my stage. Mm -hmm. To be able to do that, it takes a conscious, conscious effort at any stage. 
And the idea I there that. is that, you know, we, we try to build a conditioned reflex, but it's still, we have to switch into those modes and, you know, we have to call ourselves during that period of time, you know, to get into the mode of our self-defense, you know, our jujitsu. This is why it's important to keep your hands a little more out in front of you because it buys you that little piece of time rather than to have your, even though your hands are in front of you, if you have them up against your chest or... Oh, is that what I was doing? Well, it, it sometimes happens to us. You know, we, we become overwhelmed by the reality of, of an oppressing circumstance in life. And it's a very real thing that we're facing. These are not made up pressures that we're up against. And so we put our hands up because it gives us a little bit of a buffer to collect ourselves, to play with the Jew, instead of just always being on, you know, overwhelm mode. Right, right. And if we can reduce the overwhelm a little bit, that's a good thing. And we want it to go towards you. That makes sense. What else have you learned in this one? So one of the most profound lessons I had was in um, doing Ippon 3, where um, it was creating space to go in on to do the, the leg um, takedown. Mm -hmm. In what way? And it was so, it, it was so profound that when it, when it happened in the moment, I could actually see how, how that was a good thing to create that space. And it, and it uh, offered up opportunities to do stuff in there. Right. And it was so, and I'm, I mean, I, I don't think I'll ever forget that class where that happened. Right. Because it was, when it happened, I saw it. It'd be a good thing, it'd be a good one to write about. Yeah. Because we need a paper for your belt. Okay. You I know, can do that. You, you, you title it, you know, Yellow Belt and that kind of thing. Okay. And what it was that impacted you. Because one way we, we, we learn martial arts concept in terms of fighting where we're, there's this plane that we're fighting against. We're hitting, kicking, pushing, you know, this plane. Another way we're looking at it is we're looking to create openings to go in and have a, a more inward relationship. And that relationship could be to do a leg takedown or it could be you know, we're open space to go into that space for a reason. It could be a, to have a dialogue or to, you know, maybe it's to give a helping hand, you know. But if we don't learn to make that space well, then the person feels very combative and defensive and, and um, imposed on. And we might not have a bad intention, you know. We could have a good intention, but we're coming across without a sense of how to make that space, you know? And now that you're talking about it, uh, I think the story I was sharing about the, the guy at, you know, mm -hmm. uh, in the uh, conference room, to me that sounds like he was doing jujitsu in that moment to create space that ended up creating a very powerful connection. Right, yeah, he reached for a connection. Right, and that, to me, that was the other big thing I've learned so far is how um, useful what you're teaching in jujitsu is to making a connection in whatever whatever moment, a uh, moment of conflict or others. And, and I've seen that play out in uh, my life outside here. So I mean, I'm, I'm hooked. <laughs> That's a cool thing. And, and how are some of the ways that you've been in here and you've seen more jujitsu been enlightening in terms of what you are seeing about jiu-jitsu that you did not realize jiu-jitsu was about? Well, I, um, I, I mean, I never, <laughs> never dreamed that, that jiu-jitsu was used outside of uh, a fight. And to me, that's just so much, I mean, that was a revelation. Um, and then seeing it in action, it, um, in a non-physical fight, the fight's still the same. 
and, and seeing how it could be useful to help connect. Right. It was, I mean, there's just so many layers there. And I, and I just, I mean, I never understood that that was an aspect of martial arts. So now I can look at some of the other forms and see how they're attempting it mm-hmm. and seeing where, where it does a little bit of what we learn here and where it's you know, more of the combative side. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really interesting too because now I have um, yet another tool in my basket related to my purpose in helping people you know, navigate this realm as well. Right, because the, these are the battles that we're in. We're not, we're, we're, we're not supposed to be living in a world where everything has to be combatively fist, right. uh, s- s- solved with fists. But we do have that element in our society still. Yeah. So it's good to have something that you're learning that protects you from that, but that the application is, is also teaching you how to feel and be present for um, a, a better application of your your own life value in the adversity of living, whether that adversity is in yourself that you're dealing with, or the adversity that you're dealing with with other people, or your job, or your your health, your age, you know, your your physical capabilities, your mental issues, emotional stuff, whatever it is, these are very real things. And our jiu-jitsu should serve us in these ways. And, and also in under the physical threat of an attack physically as well. Yeah. And one other thing that, um, you know, as you were talking through that, that um, I was reminded of was a very um, useful piece of information, and that is that there is levels of um, jiu-jitsu. And when you were talking about last a class about hard versus soft. And I love that I'm learning the soft form of it. Because mm-hmm. the, the hard form, to me, it, I'm sure that it, there's value to it, but it reminds me more of the karate I was learning mm-hmm. before. Yeah, the hard form has value, and we do some hard in here. But the guys that have taught a long time will tell you that the soft form is the harder form to learn and to teach. It's very difficult. Because with, with hard form, even though it's it's still an advanced art, in, even in a hard form, the hard form requires speed and strength to compensate for advantage. And the soft form requires understanding and connection. And so to have connection in your adversity, it's a, the curriculum is three times, five times, so when you've been in your problems at home, in your life, or at work, or in yourself, and you're really running into you know, a real serious adversity or conflict with yourself or with somebody, and you just want to yell at them, and you know that the yelling isn't going to do any good, so that's going to be who can yell the loudest and try to bring the point across that way, and it leaves people really bruised and really injured. But you may get your point, or you may not. You know, I mean, there's a jujitsu application in that way of being that we can reach for, but it still leaves marks. Where the soft style is a much more intricate thing, where you really have to stop and think. You know, while the pressure is on you about what you really want to be about in the moment, and to find that angle, and uh, get in your cone and to work your principles. And have the person saying to you, I am so grateful for how you reached for me and cared for me while I was in trouble instead of, you know, having to harm me. Now, we always have that level that we can move into if we have to, you know, be more forceful. We just don't want to live that way as a way of being. And so this gives us that option, but it's a much more comprehensive way to to have to learn, and you can see if an instructor knows it because, you know, they have to be able to do the techniques in very slow motion. They have to know every aspect of the technique anywhere during it. Whereas when you're doing speed and force, you can blur through it, use leverage and height and strength and speed 
to compensate for not being present in a lot of the technique. But you can't do that in the soft style. But I'm not saying that the hard style doesn't have an application, but it has a far more limiting application. Its, it's application is when you're faced with you know, having to be take a very hard stance. And you know, usually you don't want to do that. So you want that as an option, but not in our school, not as a way of living. It's just an option, not a way to live. And to me, that's more, that's closer to that tense form of what I do. Um, and that's what I'm trying to get away with, away from, so. Right. Anything else that you find interesting and remarkable about Jiu Jitsu studies? Well, I'm constantly amazed by the, the examples that you provide in not only the, the physical form of jiu-jitsu here, but you know how it relates to things outside. And I mean, that's just, I, I, it, was, it was obvious after working here for a little while that I had never worked with a master before in this life. Because <laughs> I've never seen that. So seeing that time and time again is, is amazing to me. But even when you get proficiency to whatever level, you still have problems. It, and that's another thing with re, a reality. A lot of people, they don't respect the masters because the masters, they know they have problems. They're not trying to act like they're problem free. And that was a big mind shift for me because I, I assumed that once you were a master, you didn't have problems, but now I understand. It, it makes sense that you, you have, just have master level problems. Yeah, you have a, 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 a likely a far more comprehensive <laughs> issue on your table. Right. On your workbench that you're working with. And, you know, you're just doing the best you can do, too. And, you know, stumbling. And that's why the masters are the ones I think to study with because they're more understanding because they've, they've hit their hand with the hammer plenty of times. But a lot of people lose their respect for people that, you know, admit that. They, they don't. They don't want that. They want to have this illusion. Oh, and, and so those guys that give the illusion, like, you know, they're, they're above you and um, problem free, you, you won't be studying at their houses. They, you, you probably will never even go to their house. You know, they want to keep you away from the reality because the reality is not the way they're presenting. And so it's more important to me that you, you learn in a way that you can be authentic and um, sincere and really be an understanding person because you, got, you have experiences with stuff too. Doesn't mean you have the same ones as somebody else, but at least you can understand them. Compassionate, you know. So we stay in our cones and we, we work with this energy principles and uh, the art so that, you know, we can do uh, less damage than we would if we didn't have the art, you know? You're still impacting the world, even when you think you're doing a perfect job, you can be still pissing off somebody. And they can have a good reason, you know? So we're, we're, we're not saying that it's okay to be constantly saying it's okay to make everybody mad, you know, but you want your art to be real. And there's one other thing that I, that I learned that's profound that I'm surprised I didn't mention first, which was the concept of the cone, uh, and I, I'm still working on, you know, doing that in, uh, when I'm on the mat at least, uh, if not elsewhere, but uh, I never understood how, how important that was to finding balance, or you know, keeping balance. So I, um, I'm attempting to practice that even outside of class, just in you know driving, right. working, making coffee. It's interesting how mm -hmm. how that is starting to pervade my life. Yeah, that's good. 
Anybody else got anything to add? I'm, I, I'm not at the point where I'm seeing it in, in the key in other people, but I've seen what you were talking about, um, just some of the, um, <clears throat> like, people being balanced or not balanced, mm -hmm. or in their cone or not in their cone. Yeah, yeah. it's that, neat that is neat. Yeah. One second. That's so funny because that's got practice being in my cone. I bought one of those. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bill.